science in pajamas. Rawr. Okay, guys. Today we're going to talk a little bit about how to use the calculator functions. Now, when you're in my class or when you're doing algebraic physics, you definitely want to have it set to degrees. So this is the, the calculator I have. I got it for like 15 bucks at Target. For, I don't even know, like 15-ish years ago, give or take. They still do sell similar ones. I actually think when I got it, it was 10 bucks, but it's 15 now. So you notice how it says DEG. That means that it's set to degrees. Now, sorry. Let me clear that part out. So the DRG button stands for degrees, radians, or gradient. We want degrees. So if it's set to radians or gradients, you'll get incorrect answers with a lot of these. We need it set to degrees. Just hit there and then enter. Now, if you can't see my enter button, it is down here. But right now, I'm focusing on more so the stuff up here. All right, I'm going to show you some of the things that are really good to know about your calculator. Okay. You do need some kind of scientific calculator for physics, but it doesn't necessarily have to be one of the super duper, you know, expensive high tech ones unless maybe you're doing the calculus-based physics, but for algebra-based, this is perfect. So remember when we were talking about things like how you can find the y value of resultant sine theta. I see that came in. So, do, 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 do. so y equals r sine theta. So in other words, if we have this scenario where we have a car that is driving at an angle like that, we want to find the x and y displacements of it. Well, we were talking about in a previous video how you can, if you know the resultant, which is the hypotenuse, and if you know the angle, which is theta, you can figure out the x and y components. So let's say hypothetically we have an angle of 30 degrees. And let's say the hypotenuse was four kilometers. So this is four, an angle of 30 degrees. How you would go about doing that? You would have it already set to degrees. So you can do four, you're just getting the number four. See how it says sine right there? That's what you want, sine. It automatically opens the parentheses. 30 degrees, close parentheses, enter. So it, the y value equals 2 kilometers. And if you want to do the x value, you said x would be equal to the resultant cosine of the theta, of the angle theta. Now I'm going to change up my angle a little bit. What if it's not 30 degrees? What if it is 37 degrees instead? Still 4. So x equals 4 kilometers at an angle of 37 degrees. So 4 cosine 37 degrees Enter. 
that will give me an x value of, let's say, 3.2 kilometers. So x equals 3.2 kilometers. Now, since I changed the angle, I'm going to go back and figure out my new y. That's sine, sine. So y equals 4 sine of the angle 37. Enter would be 2.4. kilometers. So that means that the car, even though its displacement is four kilometers, to get at that spot from here all the way up here, it had a horizontal change in position of 3.2 kilometers and a vertical change in 2.4 kilometers. All right. Now, how about what if we know the x value is 7 kilometers and the y value is 3 kilometers? But I want to find out the displacement. Well, the nice thing about this one is it's Pythagorean theorem. If you know the two sides that make up the right triangle, you can find the hypotenuse. That is a squared plus b squared equals c squared. Or in other words, x squared plus y squared equals r squared. So you can rearrange that r equals the square root of x squared plus y squared, which equals the square root of 7 squared plus 3 squared. Now, how do we do that? All right. So there's a couple different ways. And notice how here is the square button, x squared. So that means if I wanted to take x, I can hit that, it adds a little square root, or a square two, hit enter, it tells me what it is. You also notice that above it, on my calculator at least, yours might be a little different. But above it, it has the square root sign. So that's where you would hit second. And you notice it says second right there on the screen, so it lets you know you hit it. That's how you get square root, so 64. Enter, and it gives square root of 8. So how we can do this problem, there's a couple different ways. You can either do 7 squared plus 3 squared equals, and then you can do, you can either remember the number, which is 58. So you did second and square root. 58, and that's your hypotenuse, about 7.6 kilometers. So R equals 7.6. Now these calculators are pretty cool because they do have some short-term memory. So remember we did 7 squared plus 3 squared equals I can hit the second button, or actually first, second, and then square root. I'm going to hit the second button again, and if you look where it says here, the negative sign up above it says A-N-S. That stands for answer. I'm going to hit that, and what it's going to automatically do is take the answer of the last thing I solved, which in this case was 7 squared plus 3 squared. And look, it takes the square root of the answer for the previous problem. And there's one more way we can look at this. 
I'm going to do square root 7 squared plus 3 squared. 7.6. Not too bad, right? Alright. Now with displacement though, we need a direction. It's a vector quantity, which means it needs a direction. And we can't really say to the left, to the right, or up, or down, because it's going at an angle. So what we have to do is we have to figure out theta. Remember, we were talking about this in a previous one. We are saying, or in our last video, we are saying to do that, theta equals the inverse tangent of the opposite over adjacent. So if we look at that, what is opposite of theta? It's your y value. What's adjacent to theta? Your x value. So theta equals inverse tangent of 3 over 7. Now the question is, how do we do that? You can't just hit the tangent, because that's going to give you, well, tangent. But if you look above it, in blue, it says tan minus 1. That's inverse tangent. So how we can do this is second inverse tangent 3 divided by 7. And it shows us our angle, 23.2, let's see. So we have 23.2 degrees. There is one more thing you have to do for this. You have to describe where the angle is at. So what we can say is, if this is a horizontal, we can say it is 23.2 degrees above the horizontal. You know, I'm kind of running out of space where you can see it. So above the horizontal. And simply what that means is degrees above horizontal. What it means is it gives me reference. Because 23 degrees without any frame of reference can be in any direction. So it's simply giving me a reference. It's saying I know that if this is a horizontal and it's above the horizontal, then I'm going to start there, move up 23.2 degrees. All right. Uh, let's see. Other good things that might be good to know for later on, maybe. I mean, that's the big stuff you need to know for um, two-dimensional motion. Something else that might be good would be, let's say, if you are ever working in scientific notation. So you have 2.3 times 10 to the negative 7th. You can do that on a calculator very easily. So we have 2.3, just like normal. You see how it says log here, and above it it says 10x. So second log, it gives us that times 10 automatically. And then the negative sign is right here. So negative. Seven, close parentheses. So let's say I wanted to multiply this value times mm, times 15. We're going to multiply that whole value times 15. You can either start off doing it this way and then simply times, because remember it takes automatically takes the answer of the last problem, 15, and you get that. Or, you can open parentheses, 2.3 second log, to get the 10, negative 7, close parentheses, 
close parentheses again because notice you have you start out with an open parentheses so you have one open then you have another open so you want to have two close times 15 there you go not too bad, right? Could be a whole lot worse, I'm sure. Alright, so that's a good introduction to how to use calculators, I think. That should at least help you out for the um, two-dimensional motion. And if you have any other questions, hit me up in our Google Classroom or an email, alright you guys? Or in class, of course. But in the meantime, stay awesome, you guys, and stay healthy. Alright, bye-bye.